This is the Asus Strix Arian M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure. It supports USB 3.2 Gen 2, as well as the ever convenient USB type C connector. Uh, it's important to note, this is just a drive enclosure and not a standalone external drive. You have to buy and install your own M.2 SSD, which I will be showing how to do in this video. But before we can get to that, we need to get this guy out of the box. So uh, let's do that. I've already taken the liberty of cutting the little plastic seals here. So let's lift this flap and see what we've got in here. First thing we see is the drive enclosure itself inside a little plastic bag. Let's get this guy out of here so we can get a little good look at him. Uh, the drive has a really great feel. It's got some nice heft to it and absolutely does not feel lightweight and cheap. The housing is made entirely from aluminum or aluminium for those of you watching from outside the US. Uh, setting that aside, let's see what else comes in the box. Beneath this piece of packaging foam here is a little card with some instructions on how to open the side panel of the drive to install your M.2 drive. They've even included the little poker thing we're going to need, which is very nice of them. Beneath that card is a little strap with a carabiner clip so you can attach your drive to your backpack or belt loop or something. Uh, I don't plan on ever using it, but it's there if it's something you feel may be useful. Along with the carabiner is a, uh, I guess, case for the enclosure to protect it from drops and stuff. I don't plan on using this either, but if you're going to use the carabiner and connect it to your backpack or something to take on the go, then maybe it's a good thing to use? I don't know. <laughs> Getting the drive into the case isn't quite as easy as I was anticipating, so I'm just going to give up on that for now and move back to the last few things in the box. Uh, Asus has supplied us with two different USB cables. This first one here is a USB-C to USB-C cable. So if your laptop or desktop has a USB Type-C port, you can just use this cable. Although USB-C is becoming more and more common, not everyone has a Type-C port on their computer, so it's nice Asus included this other Type-C to Type-A cable as well. The last thing in the box is the quick installation guide, which has some very nice pictures to show you how to open the enclosure up and install your M.2 SSD. And on that note, I think it's time we did that. Like I mentioned earlier, you will have to purchase your own M.2 SSD to put into this enclosure. This here is a one terabyte WD Black NVMe SSD I'll be installing. To remove the side panel of the enclosure, we'll need to use this little poker tool Asus included in the box. Next to the USB-C port is a little hole. This is where we need to push our little poker tool into. This will release the latches holding the side panel on, and in my case here, it just fell off onto my desk. To install our SSD, we're either going to need a small flathead screwdriver, or you can simply turn your poker tool around and use it to remove the retention screw here. You can then take your M.2 drive and insert the fingers of the drive into the slot at a 30-ish degree angle. Uh, I'm not totally sure what the angle is, but once you're at the correct angle, the drive will slot in fairly easily. With the drive now seated in the slot, we can replace the retention screw. The system ASUS is using here is slightly different than all the others I've seen before. Uh, most I've seen on PC motherboards have a little standoff on the board uh, you lower your drive onto and then put the retention screw in. On the Arian, Asus is using a screw that has the standoff built into it. Uh, see how there's a groove in the middle of the screw? That groove hooks onto the notch at the back end of the SSD, and then you lower the drive down and screw it into place. The last thing to do before using our drive is to remove this plastic film from the thermal pads and then place the side panel of the drive back on. There are some small tabs on one side of the cover which correspond with some grooves on the body of the enclosure. 
You put those tabs into the grooves and then lower the panel back down and that's it. Okay, scratch that. I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. That's not quite it. Uh, there is one more thing you'll need to do before you can use your drive. Uh, you'll need to initialize it in Windows. In one of my more recent videos, I show how to install a hard drive and SSDs into your computer. And in that video, I also showed how to initialize a drive. Uh, so if this is something you need some help with, uh, please check out that video. I'll link it in the cards and in the video description with the timestamp, meaning my link will jump you straight to the drive initialization portion of the video and you won't have to scrub through and find it. As soon as you plug the Arion into your PC, you can see that the Asus ROG logo and this other little portion of the drive here light up. This drive enclosure is compatible with ASUS Aura Sync, which is ASUS's software for controlling RGB lighting on their motherboards, graphics cards, and other peripherals. I just so happened to have an ASUS motherboard in my desktop PC, so I loaded up Aura, and at first the SSD didn't show up in Aura. I had to hit the little refresh wheel here at the upper right of the window, and then I could see the SSD and change the lighting. The cool thing about RGB lighting is you can set the color to whatever you like. They also have some different lighting effects you can apply, uh, but to be honest, while this is a neat feature that makes the drive look cool, it really serves no useful purpose whatsoever. The reason I bought the Arion is because a little over a year ago, I bought a different USB 3.1 Gen 2 M.2 drive enclosure to make transferring large files between my laptop and my desktop computer quicker and easier. This enclosure was $32.69 on Amazon at the time I bought it, but now can be had for only $23.99. For the most part, I like this enclosure. The, the body is fully made of metal, and I like its slim, simplistic design, and reading and writing data to the WD Black NVMe SSD is nice and quick. For example, I can copy over my last video about our theater room projector screen, which is a 3.71 gigabyte MP4 file at over 600 megabytes per second. I can also copy files from this drive to the Samsung 970 EVO NVMe SSD on my desktop PC at over 800 megabytes per second. So when it comes to speed, this enclosure in conjunction with the WD Black SSD, I feel is fantastic. There's one thing, however, that has irritated me about this enclosure, which prompted me to buy the Asus Strix Arion. Sometimes when I plug the USB Type-C cable into my computer, the drive fails to recognize it's been plugged in at all. I then have to unplug it from my PC, rotate the connector, and plug it in again. Sometimes this will get the drive to work, and other times I have to not only unplug and rotate the connector going to the PC, but I also have to rotate the connector going into the drive enclosure itself. Whether this is the fault of the cable or the drive enclosure, I don't entirely know, but it's something that annoys me. Yeah, I know, first world problems, right? I've said it in other videos uh, that I'm a firm believer in the old saying, you get what you pay for. Uh, and this enclosure is one of the less expensive options out there currently, so I thought maybe if I quit cheaping out and buy a more expensive enclosure, uh, perhaps I'll be buying one that's higher quality, that won't have this annoying issue. That's when I went out and bought the Asus Strix Arion. It's one of, if not the most expensive M.2 NVMe drive enclosure out there. So now the question is, is it worth the extra money or not? I haven't been using the Arion for nearly as long as the other enclosure. But so far, every time I've plugged it into my computer, it has worked, which is something I can't say about the other enclosure. As for the read and write speeds, it's no different than the cheap enclosure I bought. I can still write to the WD Black SSD at just over 600 megabytes per second and copy files off of it to my desktop PC at just over 800 megabytes per second. 
so was the Arion worth the extra money over my other cheap enclosure? If you just look at the read and write speeds I'm getting over the USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports on my PC, then no. The Arion and the much less expensive no-name enclosure perform the same in that regard. That being said, I'm not having the connectivity issue with the Arion that I have with this other enclosure. I plug it into my PC and it works. I don't have to keep unplugging it and plugging it back in until it gets recognized. Is that convenience alone worth the extra $30 that you pay for the Arion? I'll leave that for uh, you to decide. If you enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure you know what to do. Uh, there's those YouTube things we always ask people to do, so please do those before you head out if you'd like to see more content from me. I also have an Amazon store you can check out at the link in the video description where you can purchase products I feature in my videos like the Asus Strix Arion M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in another video real soon. We'll catch you later.